Hi everyone, so this is the first vid for the first lesson of the trig functions pack. We've already kind of come across sine and cos and tan, but we have these new functions which are cosecant, secant and cot, and they are like reciprocals, upside downs. So cosecant is 1 over sine, not in one letter. Secant, 1 over cos, not the one letter. Put X on there. Cot, believe it or not, 1 over tan. There. Tan sine over cos, so cot is cos over sine. There you go. When your calculator doesn't actually draw cosec, secant, and cot, you have to draw 1 over sine, 1 over cos, 1 over tan. I'll show you where they come from and then we'll just quickly graph them on the. Uh, Page, but I think there's a little bit of preamble here. Yeah. Here we go. See, look. So that bit's all there. So it says here, uh, I just say use the third letter, but I just remember. So that's 1 over tan of 304. So if I just bring the calculator up, uh, let's count gone. Hang on. I need to be a degree a degree so it's going to Come on, it's warm in here today. Uh, so I'm doing one over tan three oh four as was not So one over tan three oh four. There. Gives me minus no point. So three sixty six seven five. Two secant minus forty eight is two over cos of minus forty eight. So I can put that in my calculator. Two over cos of minus forty eight gives me two point nine nine. And cosecant squared. So in my calculator, well, I know that's going to be one over sine squared. 45, but actually in my calculator, I have to do 1 over sine of 45 all squared. So 1 over oops, sine 45 squared. There. Gives me 2. Do the same thing in radians. So very quickly, a little bit more. So I've got secant pi by 4, so that'll be 1 over cos of pi by 4. So if I change into radians, in fact, will you just work these ones out for me? Will you work them out? So I've got 1 over sine pi by 2, so you can put them in the calculator and get the answers out. 1 over tan. Pi by two. There. You work them out. Right. So it says if x is an angle such that sine of x is zero, cos of x is zero, tan of x is zero, then cosecant, secant, and cot are undefined. Right. So because you do it really one over zero, that's why. So you've got to be careful with that. What it means is where sine of x is zero, or cos of x is zero, or tan of x is zero, uh, oops, we put a t there for tan, it means um, it's got an asymptote there. Uh, just very quickly, so here's a graph of sine x. Uh, Going between one and one, well, one and minus one, even, or even minus one and one. Now, we've said that with a zero, it's an asymptote. Now it's one over, so I've got, I've got y equals sine x there, 
and I'm going to graph y equals cosecant x, which is 1 over sine x. So it's 1 over the y values. So at the left over here, around near 0, I've got 1 over nothing, which is an asymptote. Then I've got 1 over a small number. Now you know that 1 over a small number is a big number. And then as I travel around the curve, when I get to 90, uh, I get 1 over 1, which is 1. And then as I travel around the curve again, I've got a 1 over a small number, which is a big number again. So what I get is a graph which has got asymptotes, but it's like a U shape, and it touches a 1 and goes back up. So I get a U shape, and these U shapes go up towards infinity. And they stop at 1 from minus 1. But you can actually graph them on your calculator, like I said. So let's go into menu and 5. There we go. Get rid of that. Just switch over into degrees because it's easier to get out. There we go. So if I do 1 over sine x and then sort out my viewing window. So I'm going to do minus 360 to 360. Have a scale of 90. And then I'm going to do minus 8 to 8. So it goes on to infinity. Let's see what we get. There you go. So you can see where the asymptotes are, can't you? I like 0 and minus 180 and minus 360 and 180 and 270. So you can graph them all. Now the next page has got all the graphs on it. And it shows you where the asymptotes are. And you really want this in two colours, don't you? So ideally, you just go over the secants and the cosecants and the cotan graphs so you know that they stand out. That should be a one. It's got a one there, hasn't it? So you see where the one is. Uh, so that's my cosecant, my one over sine. This is my secant, my one over cos. And my cotangent, which is one over tan. So you can see that it's even better to put this in a, a different colour. To help it stand out. So instead of having just sine, cos, and tan, you've now got sine, cos, tan, you've got inverse sine, inverse cos, inverse tan, and you've got secant, cosecant, and, uh, and cotan. So there you go. And let's have a look on the next page. Okay, so we've got some uses of it. So we used to do quite a lot of algebra and solving with these as we do with everything. So what I might do, there are a couple of examples, so I might start a new bid for this page. Okay.